Well, I want Bob Burridge to tell us. Oh no, what? What am I doing now? I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you something. Okay. Margaritas for everybody. <laughs> You know, you know, this is, I, I don't know why you got it here. You're interrupting our dinner time, you know, and I'm getting that. So what would you like me to talk about? Uh, why are you here? Because uh, uh, you pay me. Oh, well, that's a good reason. <laughs> no, why am I here? I, I'm invited here. How many are in Bob's class or have taken it? Wow, they're still talking to me, too. How about that? Wow. So, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, well, I'm a painter, and every once in a while, the zookeepers let me out of the zoo, and I get to be with a bunch of animals, and we throw a lot of paint around. And I've been doing this for about 10 years, don't you think? Something like that. And uh, sometimes I'm here twice uh, a year. We skipped last year. I, ne I needed a vacation from Cheap Joe. <laughs> so uh, I'm back again, and we, we're shooting a couple uh, videos, and it's exciting to shoot the videos. We're doing some marketing videos, which will be out in a couple of months, and we did uh, some some abstract floral videos the other day too. It's pretty exciting. I'm one of the most fortunate ones to I know where to buy my cheap <laughs> materials too, by the way. And uh, and so uh, I'm one of the fortunate ones I get to uh, paint. I've been painting every day for 20 years. Every day I have a wonderful marketing manager, my wonderful girlfriend and wife, who manages me and I'm the reason why I'm anywhere. Uh, right. well, she's the reason I'm anyway. <laughs> my job is to stay healthy and show up. I think Woody Allen said that. I said 80% of life was just showing up. Yeah. So um, and that's what I'm doing and I love to come down here. You all know that. And we all, you're absolutely right. The best people in the world. Isn't it great to call here and place an order and you get that wonderful Southern hospitality. How, how y'all doing out there in California? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and would you like some iced tea? I said, what kind of iced tea? Well, sweet tea. I, I never knew the word sweet tea had ten syllables in it. Uh, you guys are just so great. So, And I get hush puppies whether I want them or not. That's the first thing I do. Be, be, before that, I get the grits whether I want them or not. But I get sweet tea, which is my favorite little thing. So uh, you all know how great the guy is. He, he, you know, he treats his employees really great. One of the things that impressed me if you've ever been on to one of his uh, tours through the uh, through the factory uh, he stops and talks to every one of his employees he's got that positive attitude everybody hey how's your wife how's the kid how's the dog and things like that he's got little yeah. posters uh, around uh, you know the positive energy type posters he runs his company like they used to in the 80s you know today's the best day of your life and that kind of a stuff you know and the American Eagle and flags and all that great man and uh, we're grateful you're absolutely right we're grateful that we have a cheap Joe's and and uh, when they say, uh, the Cheap Joe, when they said you should change your name, mm -hmm. so it used to be Cheap George. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That didn't work. Okay, so th I'm happy and thank you, Holly, for having let me play and talk with you. So th thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. It's great. So we'll see you in the workshops. Oh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> Any more questions that we have? Oh, Frank has a comment or question. I'd like to share uh, two stories, if I may. Uh, I've been painting for about 60 years. In about 25 years or more at the Spring Maid Beach workshops, I met Joe Miller. And uh, he gave me a wooden nickel. <laughs> and I looked at the wooden nickel and it had, I don't know, a buffalo on one side, as all nickels used to. And I flipped it in the back side and it had Boone Drugstore. And he said, Frank, why don't you come down to Boone sometime and run a workshop? And I said, well, what do you do in Boone for excitement? He said, you go outside of my drugstore and watch the traffic light change. Yeah. <laughs> now getting back to art materials for a moment, I had the uh, extreme pleasure of doing a demonstration for for about 200 little f first and second graders, some, something sponsored by the PTA back home in Pittsburgh one time. And there were so many of them I had to do the demo twice. And they asked some very interesting questions. For instance, I finished the first demonstration, it was a painting of flowers, and uh, I, I, afterwards I asked, uh, because all little children are artists, you know, mm -hmm. and I said, do you have any questions? Now, the one little kid said, how much money do you make? <laughs> they go right to the core. <laughs> and I kind of evaded that. And, uh, and then another kid said, now oh, listen, Joe, this is very important. Where do you get your stuff? Oh. 
And I realized, because when I was a kid, I never knew an artist. I never saw good brushes. I, I mean, we had these cheap little praying sets and so forth. And, of course, I told them Cheap Joe, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know if they had 800 numbers back then or not. But, yeah, but uh, well, they did when Joe started his operation. So, stuff, Joe, I notice you add the word stuff to your name. Very appropriate, I think, because without stuff, you know, you don't have a chance. I think the best thing you can do for little kids is give them stuff. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, that's just the two things I wanted to share with you. Yeah. I like that. Thank you, Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? Elka, right over here, Rob. How, how has, well, I, I, one observation I'd like to make is that I think the, this story that you told, how the business started, is the great American story because here's a guy who got out of drugs. There wasn't any money in drugs and went into art <laughs> supplies where the real money was. I mean, that's great. But I'm curious because um, over your tenure, the uh, the internet has you know become an integral part of the business. How how has that changed the business, or what what's it like without internet and now with internet? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, the, the, the web has certainly changed the way we do business um, in, in a number of ways. Um, one is we now approximately half of our business comes in via the web. So it's a, it has become a very large part of our business. Um, it also has changed our demographic. Uh, the average customer's age is, is down significantly from what it was 10 years ago. The other thing that we can do now with the web that we were never able to do before is if we want to introduce a new product tomorrow, we can. That's mm -hmm. not an issue. If we want to tell I, I don't know, you know, a million people about what we're doing uh, at Cheap Joe's, we can now do that without having to print a million pieces and mail that. And if, I don't know how many of y'all have noticed, but the postal service rates have been going up a little bit lately. And uh, So the cost of mailing the catalogs and the flyers and the postcards and all the other stuff has gone up incrementally, so the web's allowed us to keep our costs down as well. And uh, so it has had a, a, a very dramatic effect on how we do business.